periarteritis. As we mentioned before, nodular periarteritis it is systemic vasculitis with predominant damage of small arteries. Here it is the skin with small arteries in the subcutaneous fat. We can see epidermis in the left side. Central part it is dermis and right side it is subcutaneous fat. In subcutaneous fat we can detect granulomas. First of all, uh, I would like uh, to re remind you that these structures which can be seen in the center, it is not pathological structures. It's normal uh, derivatives from skin. These are sebaceous glands, sweet glands, and hair follicle. So normal derivatives, derivatives in the skin. But pathology come in the subcutaneous fat tissue, in the small arteries. Here you can see a uh, small artery with obliterated lumen. Lumen is obliterated with connective tissue, which is which comes with infiltration of these different inflammatory cells. You can see rests of RBC in the center. So it's uh, this small cleft, the all which got left from the lumen. Lumen become obliterated. In the area around uh, blood vessel, you can see non-specific granuloma. Non-specific because it comes without some specific cells, like, for example, the rheumatic fever, with the Ashoff and Danishkov cells. In this variant of disease, without specific cells. Inflammatory cells which are present are small round uh, nucleus lymphocytes, plasma cells with pinkish cytoplasm. These are eosinophils with segmented nucleus and uh, light bluish cytoplasm. These are neutrophils, polymorphonuclear cells. Also, macrophages can be seen. Uh, this uh, large clear nucleus and uh, also some uh, amount of connective tissue fibers, pinkish and uh, elongated nuclei of fibroblasts. So not specific granuloma. Not only single because also we can see granulomatous inflammation there. Sorry. Due to one second, due to it, uh, we can see that uh, there is also blood vessel with beginning of process of obliteration. So it is already partially obliterated by connective tissue and it's surrounded by inflammatory cells. Yes. Yes, uh, You almost mentioned Ashton cells. They are not present. They are not present. One more time, it's no specific granuloma. Listen to me, guys. Ashoff cells will be present in rheumatic fever. It's a nodular parotiditis. It's other disease. So no Ashoff cells in this disease. And uh, consequences of it: petechial hemorrhages in the dermis due to damage due to inflammation of vascular wall. Outcome: petechial hemorrhage and multiple hemorrhagic syndrome. So skin in nodular periarteritis, hematoxylin and eosin.